Today I'm feeling nostalgic and my hippocampus has an itch that it needs scratching. When I was younger, there was a history program that I used to eagerly watch whenever it aired and it was called Battlefield Britain. Tally ho, pip pip bum, Bernard your uncle. And it was such a vibe. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Battlefield Britain was a historical series that originally aired in 2004 for one season on the BBC and was presented by the father-son duo Peter and Dan Snow. You know nothing. Dan Snow. You may know Dan Snow from The One Show or other history series he's presented or from the YouTube channel History Hit. His father, Peter Snow, was predominantly a news reporter and presenter for ITV and BBC for a large bulk of his career prior to creating Battlefield Britain with his son. The premise of the show is that it details significant battles that happened throughout Britain's history and how they shaped the country to what it is today. When presenting the show, Peter and Dan perform different roles within it. Dan would present the human perspective of how the fighting affected the people involved, whether that was the ordinary citizen or the soldiers fighting at the time. He also talked about the weaponry and uniforms that both opposing armies used as well. Peter would mainly focus on presenting the strategies used by the conflicting sides and what caused those successes and failures on the battlefield alike. The combination between the two of them created a well-rounded experience as a viewer because you got both the nitty gritty cold hard facts of how the battle was won and lost, but also a great sense of empathy for the people involved in these conflicts and the repercussions that it had on their lives. Now I've got that out the way, let me talk about why I like the show so much. Wait a minute, and what? Away we go. When Peter and Dan introduce one of the key military figures involved in the narrative, let's say William the Conqueror or Boudicca, we would then be blessed with these hilariously low resolution PS1 level busts of the figure's face. It's easy to laugh at the graphics today, but what these busts did for you as a viewer was put a face to the name. They weren't just a character in a history book anymore. You could visualize them. The historical figure wasn't this mythical or fictional being. They felt real now. They existed. They felt present. And that was awesome. Also, when I was viewing the show, the PS2 had only just come out. So those graphics look bang into me and still feel nostalgic to this day. We also got these face-off moments where the two opposing busts would turn and look at one another as if they were in Street Fighter or Tekken. Get ready for the next battle. Fight! What stuck out to me was the stylistic choices of how the program was shot and edited. At times when watching certain parts of the show, you felt like you were watching a beta version of Silent Witness or any other spy film or program for that matter. For example, you'd get these gridded Google map views akin to a battleship board game, and it would snake along the axes. It would find its spot and zoom in to this blue filtered view that looked like you were going to drone strike Sussex. They would always use these blue overlays for certain shots. These shots gave the appearance as if the camera crew was spying on Pete and Dan. Honestly, it looked like they were pretending to be MI5 agents who had gone rogue, or Peter was being caught shoplifting on the CCTV, and Dan had been done for speeding on the M6 in his landing. Although I joke about how it was filmed, what these shots did for me as a viewer was give the impression that Pete and Dan were trying to find something top secret, and knew something they shouldn't, something important, and that they were looking to find the truth. It gave the program this undertone of tension as a result. And in a way, these shots were fitting because many a time they would talk about spies and other forms of espionage that would have been involved leading up to the battle discussed. And despite my jokes, I wouldn't change these shots for the world because of this. The other shots you see in the show are a similar vibe to either Country File or Panorama. I always couldn't help but giggle at all the poor innocent citizens caught in the crossfire of Dan and Pete's BBC News style presentation. They would walk through the common folk, totally ignoring them like the peasants they are. Then you'd see a random guy staring deadpan at the camera, completely forgetting about his eggs he was just collecting at the local market, not knowing what the hell was going on and why he was being filmed. Vincent. I'm on the intercom. At the beginning of the show, it states, The actors in this show are improvising about real events. No way! There isn't an Anglo-Saxon that has travelled through space and time just to tell us, Hey, Harold Godwinson's a nice guy. 
I do get why they put the message in, because they're trying to let you know that they aren't being historically accurate in these moments where they have the actors performing. The actors are purely there for the immersion. Throughout the program, these improv actors, who are basically LARPing, perform as if they are a person from that part of history. These scenes with the actors were set as if they were being interviewed about the events that have unfolded. Having these actors added more weight to what Dan and Peter were saying throughout the show. Instead of hearing the Normans charge the Saxon shield wall, you got lines like this. You could smell the rancid breath of these Vikings. You could you could smell what they had for breakfast. And this. The dead couldn't even fall to the ground, you know. They were just pressed up against us because we were crushed together. That accompanied Dan and Peter's detailing of how the battle unfolded. The improv actors created this sense of empathy for the audience that would have been harder to achieve without them. I think the fact that they are in an interview setting and not just reenacting the past events, but reliving the past events, makes it feel less like a story and more like a current affair or an episode of Panorama. And I have to tell you, regardless of how corny they are, and trust me, they are. Seeing Norse blood flow. It really does uh, warm your heart. The actors add another level of immersion that so many other history shows just don't. They aren't just there for the facts, they are there for the feelings. Stirring performance, boys. I was really moved. The music of Battlefield Britain was brilliant. It amplified the atmosphere created when Dan and Peter were explaining what was happening in that moment. If it wasn't blue overlaid spy scene, you'd get these echoing drums with this electronic sounds that reminded me of Ratchet and Clank, like this. If there was a looming threat, you'd get these eerie sounding horns accompanied by an ominous drone like this. If it was during a battle, you'd get these fast-paced drums along with the violins and a chorus that would have these punctual staccato notes that jabbed in and out of the track like this. They married the mood of the moment to the soundtrack perfectly. In my opinion, it helped emphasise the tones the show was trying to convey. The musical element of this show is a key part of it, and I think it's something that goes unnoticed due to the visuals of the show. Talking about visuals... Wow. Battlefield Britain did an excellent job for the time at mixing CGI and live action together. With combining these two elements, they were trying to capture a grandiose atmosphere when it came to the battlefield itself. An example of this would be in the first episode where they had a shot of Boudicca's swelling horde of Iceni and other Celts in a line, jeering and shouting at the Romans. Now this to me looks expansive, and I know it's not on the same level as a Lord of the Rings or a Game of Thrones, but for a history show with a fraction of the budget, this was so well done, and really did leave an impression of scale that so many others find hard to achieve. Nice. One of my favourite things about the whole show is Peter and his travelling magical suitcase. Pete would randomly walk across the British countryside with said briefcase and whap it out. Not like that, guys. Whenever he felt the need to burst into an info dump about how a bunch of British people killed each other. Despite my goofs, the concept at the time, especially for TV, was quite innovative and combined the new budding technology of CGI with Peter's love of history. Peter also was an avid railway enthusiast, which totally makes sense because his briefcase is the historical equivalent of a CGI tabletop Warhammer game. Instead of playing with goblins, he was painting planes and gluing railways. He used this travelling magical briefcase as a presentational device to display the map of the battlefield from a bird's eye perspective, where you would see all the little CGI men marching around, doing battley things, seeing where they were going and what they were doing, although they must have been so frightened when getting prodded by Peter's pasty sausages. What does that have to do with him? No, no, he's got a point. There was something intimate when Peter was talking over the magical briefcase. In a few episodes, you'd get these cracking shots where Peter was eye level with his CGI topographical map, and it seemed as if he was watching it unfold with you. It added this fantastical element to the show that I can't quite put my finger on. Oh, steady. Pete. Pete, there's people down there. Pete, stop. 
The camera would zoom in and out of the map of the battlefield, and when it zoomed in, you'd see the CGI soldiers marching around or running towards their impending doom looking like absolute goofballs. But whenever this shot happened, it breathes more life into the alternate universe of Pete's magical briefcase. Now, looking back, those graphics are bad for today's standards, but despite this, it doesn't take away from the immersion this show makes me feel, and if anything, it created a sense of scale that would be too expensive to do in a live action manner. <sighs> What Peter's briefcase did so well was that it laid the foundation for the audience to understand exactly what was going on. Instead of him just explaining to you the strategies that each side was using, he was showing you the strategies that each side was using. You could see it with him, even though he was looking at a green screen, unfold. He would point out what they were doing and why they were doing it and why it was difficult and this just helped what he was saying sink in on such a fundamental level where you didn't need a deep understanding of history to understand what he was saying. Nothing fancy. I understand. Nothing fancy. What made Peter's descriptions with the briefcase hit home was the fact that most of the time he was at the location where the battle had taken place. So you got to experience what Peter explained in such a multifaceted way. You got to see it from a tactical bird's eye perspective, a graphic video game 3D perspective, but also from a visually tactile perspective, where you could see the field and the moors and the highlands where our ancestors of old fought. This in turn added another layer to the immersive historical cake that was Battlefield Britain. Now, don't get me wrong, there's lots of 12 year olds nowadays that would be able to bash out these graphics in no time. But for 2004, this was cutting edge, and such a unique way to depict what was going on between opposing forces. It was so cutting edge in fact, that Battlefield Britain won a BAFTA for the visual effects that it displayed in the show. If any of you loved Warhammer, tabletop strategy games, or the creative assembly Total War games, Medieval 2 is still my jam to this day, then Peter's magical briefcase moments would have been something you constantly look forward to seeing throughout the show. I'm so excited! Now the magical tabletop would have been nothing if it wasn't for Peter Snow. His narration was, in my opinion, impeccable. And Dan did do a brilliant job on his end of things, but there was something about Peter that felt like he was this wise old man stereotype akin to Gandalf or Dumbledore, giving you pearls of wisdom as he espoused about the conflicts that were unfolding beneath him on his magical briefcase. Pete and Dan did a fantastic job at explaining rather complex subject matter in a way that all members of the audience could understand, and it never felt patronising or dumbed down. Oh, and by the way, Pete and Dan also co-wrote the show as well. What can't they do, these two magical munchkins? Peter and Dan's writing didn't come off as biased either. It seemed that they were really trying to be as balanced as they possibly could. Now don't get me wrong, there will be a slither of bias here and there because I feel like it's only natural as humans to do so. But I got the impression that Peter and Dan's aims were objectivity at the core of their writing and their main goal was to get the history right. This was evident in a multitude of times where they admit that they don't know for certain or they are admitting that their evidence is limited. There is this clear cut honesty with these two and it really did feel like the historical facts came first you like that you like that the pacing of battlefield britain is a smooth experience this show has this feeling of a crescendo because most of the program is building the stakes and the tension before the concluding battle that caps off the end of the show what was interesting is that the important final battle would usually only take up 10 to 15 minutes of the runtime, but very rarely felt like it did, and not in a bad way. The reason being was that every detail shown to the audience prior to this ultimate battle was trying to build on the tension for it, and because of this, the final conflict comes across like it has been going on for much longer than it has. The whole time you are waiting in anticipation of how this is going to play out, unless you already know the result and you're just there for the briefcase. Which I get. Pete and Dan would also talk about prior battles that led up to the concluding one. And what is great about having multiple battles within their narrative is that within these battles you get a beginning, middle and an end. Peter would describe how both camps set up, how each side would fight, and then someone would win. And I know that's a simple summarisation of it. But what I'm trying to say is as a viewer it is satisfying to have these mini conclusive moments within the overarching story that Peter and Dan are telling, which also has its own beginning, middle and end. It's like a video game where you finish the side quest during the main mission. You are getting answers and achieving something throughout the program's runtime, which gives the viewer a sense of accomplishment. I got it. I got the concept. 
When Battlefield Britain concludes, it gives you this sense of resolution at the end of the show. You may not like the resolution, which is fair because most of the time the good guys don't win. Nevertheless, because someone has to come out on top, it means that the show has this natural resolution to it. Every episode has a different segment of history they focus on, such as the Spanish Armada, Boudicca, Hastings. So because of this, each show has its own self-contained narrative that doesn't bleed into the next show. You can pick up any episode in whatever order and watch them independently of one another, which I prefer because you don't need to watch an entire season before you pick up an episode. You like that? Yeah! An element of the show I really appreciated was when Dan tries to replicate the experience of the common soldier involved in these historical conflicts by doing so in a controlled, modern way. An example of this would be that in episode 2, Peter and Dan visited a police station and Dan took part in a riot police equivalent of a Saxon shield wall where two men ran at them like crazed lunatics. Or when he stood and faced 20 horses charging at him head on whilst measuring his heart rate. These actions cement the program's theme of empathy. Dan does his best to try and understand how the soldiers would feel in these moments and recounts his experience dealing with his safe modern day equivalent. I know it's not exactly the same, but it would be so difficult to recreate this 100% authentically. And I for one believe that their heart and intentions are in the right place. When Dan was doing his experiments, there was this cute sentimental moment between Dan and Peter, where Peter would be watching him from the sideline cheering and joking, whilst his son was being put for these absurd situations. It was endearing to watch, and even more so when revisiting the show, and I have to give Dan his props and kudos for trying to put himself in the soldier's shoes, and relaying that to the audience, and giving us more understanding as a result. Final thoughts. Battlefield Britain is a show that I find myself coming back to. I watched it recently and found myself falling back in love with it all over again. It manages not to feel too formal or stale, and hits the right spot of not too much entertainment where you forget about the history and the facts, but not too little where you feel like you're listening to a dry PhD lecture about gravel. I have a soft spot in my heart for Battlefield Britain, because a lot of the time when I watched the show, it was with my dad. And there's something heartwarming about seeing a father and son bond over their shared interests, whilst me and my dad bonded over hours by watching their show every week. I want to thank Dan and Pete for creating these moments where me and my dad were able to bond and watch you two do the same. Battlefield Britain, despite being filmed 20 years ago, still holds up today. If you can look past some of the visuals, you will then discover a show that aims to entertain and inform you on crucial historical moments throughout Britain's history. And like history, this show is something we shouldn't forget. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Lately fill my days are with all this amazing stuff Hottest part of the day is the wake up Trying to keep my eyes shut My butterflies feel more like a stomach bug